Always taking two or three steps to the one. He reminds me years ago when uh, Jimmy Lynham used to play at St. Joe. He was only five feet eight inches. But he always had it a little more hustle, a little more steam. He could go a little longer than everybody else. Well, St. Joe's always had a guard like that. Harry Booth was another one. Right. Okay, Eagles ready, will inbound. Coach Crusoe has had a chance to set his offense, tell him what he wants him to do. Allen inbounds to Tolliver. They're on our left. Tolliver with a move. Conestoga still playing man to man. <coughs> There's Crestle on the drive. Crestle with a fake. Comes underneath to Giddens. Giddens with the ball. On the move. He's got it. Nice move, Alfonso Giddens. Foul on Jackson. Tell you, when Giddens gets position Giddens on you, with it's eight. tough to defense him. He's got Third some foul on muscle Jackson. behind him. Eagles up by 18. And this is what we like to see. The Eagles are inching their lead up, not seeing it fall. You got to play the last quarter like the first. Giddens ready. First shot's up around, no good. Jackson with a rebound. Finds Cowperthwaite. Cowperthwaite coming down court. Looks underneath, there goes the dribble. And we're gonna have the foul. This foul's gonna be on Giddens. You know, Frank, Conestoga, one of the things, they have become predictable. Ball in the middle, bounce pass to the man in the baseline. The baseline man always drives, and the Eagles have picked it up and learned to play it, and Conestoga just is not getting that shot in there any longer. Yeah. I'm surprised they don't do more outside shooting. I was talking to someone who scouted them, and, and he told me that they did at least 50% of their shooting from the outside, and I haven't seen that tonight. Of course, when you, when you miss your first few, maybe you're afraid to take those outside shots. Two shots up, good. Conestoga cuts the margin to 16, full court pressure. Harry Allen with the ball, finds Giddens. Giddens on the move. There goes Jackson up with him. Fourth foul on Derek Jackson. He's been their big rebounder tonight. 62-46, Giddens goes back to the line. This time, should be shooting two. Did you say that's four on Jackson? Four on Jackson. Well, if he goes out, they are really in trouble. Not that they aren't already. Giddens with the first shot. Nine for Giddens. Eagles already with three players in double figures. Giddens could become the fourth. He is, and that's what we like to see. Balanced scoring. Here comes Keel. The Eagles are falling back now, content not putting the pressure on all over the court. There's Cowperthwaite, goes over to Shevlin. Shevlin out to Cowperthwaite, comes in, finds Shevlin. Shevlin on the drive, short jumper up, no good. Ball off to Giddens. Ball hit by Cowperthwaite, underneath. I don't know what this call is. I don't is. know what it is either. Is he calling a... Well, whatever it was, it was a good play because Conestoga had a three on O. I think, I think it's a Norristown player kicked the ball. Conestoga inbounding under its own basket. Coming out deep to Shevlin. Shevlin will look. There's Reynolds. Ball taken away by Kressel. Over to Tolliver. Eagles on the move. Tolliver stops. Looks for Giddens. Ball is hit. Coming back is Shevlin. Shevlin launches the jumper high. In and around. There's a tip by Jackson. That's about the third tip for Jackson tonight, and he really does that well. He's got 16 points. There goes a steal by Reynolds. Press roll back. Reynolds takes it right to him. <laughs> Going to have an offensive foul on Reynolds. I didn't think that was a bad call. I, I hear all this screaming, but Cresswell was planted there under the basket, not moving. Eagles will inbound. Here they come. Cresswell bounce pass to Giddens. Giddens to Allen. Back to Giddens on the go. What a play. Eagles, 66 to 48 over the Pioneers. Here comes Shevlin. Shevlin with the ball. Tolliver playing him. Shevlin almost loses it. There goes Cowperthwaite launching a three. He's got it. Third three-pointer, three nine points. Here comes Tolliver back. We're going to have a foul on Cowperthwaite, reaching in trying to steal that ball. His third foul. You know, I don't know why he doesn't shoot more often. Isn't he three for three? Yeah, for but that Frank, they're, they're getting their hands in his face, and he's been out awfully far. Tolliver will be on the line shooting one and one. 
Ryan Tolliver, sure shot up. He's got it. Solid. Here goes Tolliver with the second. Eagles stretch their lead back to 16. Tolliver up. He's got it. Eagles 68-51. 3.23 left in the game. Cowperthwaite coming down court with a dribble. Tolliver and Cresswell both out to meet him. Over to Shevlin. And you want to force them to to work for their shot. Jackson launches a jumper from the corner. He's got it. That's 18 for Derek Jackson. Eagles quickly back. Allen breaks the press. Looks for Giddens. Bounce pass by out of bounds. And here again, you don't want to see the Eagles slow it down necessarily too much, but there is no reason to force that ball underneath. You've got a 15-point lead. You're down just under three minutes. There goes a long shot. Keel, he launches the three. He's got it. That's nine for Pete Keel. Darnell Carroll off the bench for the Eagles. Ball's in the hands of Allen. Looks up court. Looks for, oh. throws it away. Ball comes over to Cowperthwaite. Ball stolen by Allen. Allen back with Perry. Allen finds Giddens on a good move. Giddens with a layup. Assist, Perry Allen. And there's a walk against Conestoga. Pressure applied. Harry Allen going out, and Harry Allen is limping again. Looks like might be his knee, or he's got, now he's got cramps. Harry Allen has a cramp in his leg. That's why he's doing the, the pulling the toe bit. Darnell Carroll in for the Eagles. Timeout going to Conestoga. Eagles up by 14. And Coach, so far, the Eagles have been able to resist any Conestoga move. Coach Cresswell is just shaking his head, and I think it's because of some of those passes the Eagles have been making. Yeah, I think he wants to remind them again. Take it easy. And what's the difference whether you win by 18 or by 14? You've got control of the game. And you know, they have to get it in their heads that the coach knows what he's talking about. I mean, they, they have one of the best coaches in the area. He's been here before. He knows. Well, they should have learned from the Abing Abington game because that's one of the things that happened in that game. Okay, the Eagles will inbounds. They have control of the ball. You want to see them now with 229, taking good shots, content not to hurry things. I guess uh, Conestoga is going to try to go to a full court press. Coach Cresswell certainly has to remember last year when Haverford came back and pulled that game out at the very end. Goes the ball, knocked out of bounds. It's going to be the Eagles retaining possession. 2.20 left. Carroll inbounds. He's going to go deep to Cresswell. Cresswell right back to Tolliver. Brian Tolliver, good little ball handler. Pressure on him, gets over to Cresswell. Cresswell with a jumper, no good. Perry on the rebound, ball knocked out of bounds. Eagles going to maintain possession. I don't think that was the short shot that Coach Cresswell wanted to see the Eagles take. Here's Carroll. Carroll inbounding to Tolliver. Gonna have a foul. Looks like it's on number 43, Pete Keel. Somebody just stepped on Tolliver's ankle. Sorry, Jason Shevlin is second. Tolliver to the line. I'm not going to say who leaned into my ear and just said two for two right before Tolliver missed. There's Keel. Keel turned around, looks underneath, finds Jackson. There's some, ooh, Giddens looked like he made a nice play there. We've got a foul. Fourth foul on Giddens. Be Derek Jackson going to the line. He should be shooting two. 151 left in the game. Jackson shot up for good. And Conestoga to this point is nine for nine on the foul line, Frank. Perfect. Glad we're not in a low, uh, short, close game. And with that, Jackson misses, hustles out. Uh, you should have told me before how good they were. Gets on the, the foul rebound. Line. We're going to have a foul reach in Cresswell. And it'll be Jackson going back to the line this time. 
Third foul on Cresswell. Nope. Not in the foul shooting situation yet. Reynolds inbound. Comes deep to Calperthwaite. The clock is on the run. Calperthwaite finds Keel. Keel on the drive. Fakes the jumper. Tries to get it underneath. Carroll comes out with it. Carroll tries to dribble. Jackson steals it. Finds Shevlin. Nothing doing underneath. Cresswell out with the ball. Looks over for Tolliver. Finds him. Tolliver over to Perry. Perry on the move. Perry with a dribble. No good. Battling for the board. Giddens and Perry. Ball out of bounds. 121 left. And the Conestoga coach clearing his bench. Number 22, Inman. Number 34, Gunther. Number 44, Siebert. Number 54, six foot eight inch senior Andy Rappaport. And number 41, six foot two inch senior Duff, Ian Tremont. Good move by the Conestoga coach, Frank, giving everybody a chance, knowing he's not going to win this game. Inman with the ball. Looks underneath for 44, Siebert. Siebert goes, there's 41, jump shot around, out. That's number 41, Jeff Dean Tremont. Giddens has it over to Cresswell. Cresswell over to Tolliver. We're down under a minute now. Cresswell. Eagles will try to hold on to the ball. Carroll out to Cresswell. Gunther playing him. Cresswell over to Tolliver. Inman on him. Here comes McGuigan. Jason Smith off the bench for the Eagles. Cresswell on the move. Looks underneath. Ball is hit by Inman. Here comes Cresswell. Smith and Bonds off the bench for the Eagles, replacing Perry and Giddens. Carroll, looking deep for Tolliver, finds him. Tolliver on the reverse dribble. Goes again, looks for Carroll, doesn't have him, over to Bonds. Bonds to McGuigan. McGuigan launches the three off the front of the rim. McGuigan with a rebound, ball taken away by Dean Tremont, coming on the break to Gunther. Gunther on the move, he's got it. Gunther with his first two, 70-59, 22 seconds left. Eagles throw the ball away. Here comes Sean Scanlon back in the game. Scanlon replacing Tolliver. Rappaport will inbound the ball. Six foot eight inch senior center to Gunther. Gunther over to Inman. Inman in the back to Gunther, looking for the long shot. He launches it. It's off, no good. Battle under the boards. It's Bonds. Up to Carroll. Carroll on the move. Left-handed layup. He's got it. Oh, nice Barnell Carroll with four. Two seconds left. There goes the shot. No good. And the Norristown Eagles take their first step in District 1 with a 72-59 victory over the Pioneers of Conestoga. And we'll have for you right now Jim Emery with the stats, and we will be back with a final wrap in a few moments. Good evening once again. I'm Jim Emery with the final stats of this year's first playoff game. For Conestoga, our scorers are Derek Jackson with 19 points, Jason Shevlin with 11, Scott Coperthwaite with 9, and Pete Keel, and Miles Reynolds also with 9. We also have Greg Gunther with two. For Norristown, Harry Allen led the Eagles with 18. Ryan Tolliver had 17, as did Derek Perry. Alfonso Giddens had 14. Darnell Carroll had four. And John Cresswell had two in the Eagles' 72-59 victory over Conestoga. Before we close up tonight, I'd like to thank Mr. Nelson, Mr. Winkle, our announcers, our camera person, Paul Bronson, our director, Mr. Koya, and the entire NASD TV production crew. We'll be back with you in a couple minutes. All right, Frank, we're back here. Eagles take the first step in District 1 play, a step that last year they could not take. But we all know that this second game is the big game. Norristown will face the winner of the Coatesville Haverford game. I would expect that to be Coatesville. We have played Coatesville earlier this year. We lost. Uh, a different team by us now, but how important is this next game? 
Well, Jim, we have to win it in order to make districts. Only eight, six teams are going to come out of the districts. If we lose this one, we're out. And we're definite underdogs playing Coatesville at Coatesville. Everyone will say, well, Norristown has gotten better, but so has Coatesville. And Coatesville, I think, has a team where we cannot get behind. I don't think we'll press them. I don't think we can play catch-up ball against them. We're going to have to stay with them the whole game or be leading the whole game. I'd like to remind the fans about what you said and the way these district playoffs work. If we win the next game, we become a quarterfinalist. At that point, even if you lose, you get one more chance because we do send six teams on into the playoffs. Earlier this year, when Coatesville beat us, um, again, we were not a good foul shooting team at that time. I don't think that we handled the ball as well. Coatesville won a very close game, three-pointer at the buzzer to beat Downingtown, and we have beaten Downingtown. We're certainly not going to be outclassed in that game. It depends on how we go in and shoot and how tough we play our defense. Well, the big advantage they're going to have is playing in their gym, and you know their fans are going to be there. Whether our fans will be there or not is another thing. Yeah, and there's something we would like to encourage uh, the local Norristown fans. The game is next Tuesday evening. What Frank said is right. I've gone there to playoff games. Coachville will have their part of the stands packed and take as much of our stands as they can, and they will make a lot of noise. And that can be a real advantage for a team. Uh, I would hope to encourage many of you fans, next Tuesday night, let's move down. Uh, follow these Eagles. Take the trip to Coatesville. Mr. Winkle has promised not to give any physics homework that <laughs> evening to help people. Of course, Jim, we keep saying Coatesville, Haverford may upset them. Well, that would only be to our advantage because if Haverford wins, we get the game at home. And I think that from a psychological standpoint, a reminder of last year, that would have to help us. Whatever the case, Norristown fans, the Eagles are moving along. Let's get your support behind this team and help them along. These games are important. The Eagles are a young team. The longer they can last this year, the more it's going to help them as they look ahead to the future. Some final words, Frank. Again, next Tuesday night, Eagles in action, second round District 1 playoffs. Some final words from you. Well, Jim, I think it's been a good year. As I said, anybody who follows Norristown has to be happy. Here's, here's a group of all new players came in here and, uh, you know, a lot of people would have been happy if they won just 70 percent of their games. And here we are going into the finals with a good shot at winning the district, as good a shot as just about anybody. And I think all Norristown fans have to be happy with this year's team, no matter what happens. And they have to be very happy about the fact that most of them, almost all of them, are going to be back next year.